Hi, I'm Hamish Black, and welcome to Writing on Games. Shadow of the Colossus is considered by many to be one of those rare classics that you need to play before you die, and a large part of that, I think, is down to its story, or at least the way it's told. Within its simple tale of a boy slaying gigantic beasts to resurrect his deceased ward, it manages to get you questioning your complicity as a player in what's happening on screen. You carry out these objectives because you're the player character, and that means you're in the right, right? Well, as you fell colossus after colossus and your sense of achievement quickly turns to a growing sense of dread, you begin to get the feeling that the game doesn't see things that way. It's masterful, arguably laying down the framework for the many other games that would tackle moral ambiguity in the player's actions in years to come. But think about how it is that that story is actually conveyed to you. There's little in the way of exposition, nothing explicitly telling you that what you're doing is wrong until the very end. There's nothing inherently evil or sad about the visual of a monster collapsing. You see that in games all the time. You kill monster, monster falls. And yet there's something about Shadow of the Colossus that makes that fall feel truly painful, that makes the landscape feel vast and unknowable, that manages to instill a general sense of unease in your every action. It's a device that's arguably as important as any mechanic in the game in delivering its story, and yet it so often feels overlooked. It's Kao Otani's unbelievable soundtrack. And it's not just a case of it's really good or it's memorable. I genuinely feel that the music in this game, the specific compositional techniques implemented, play one of the biggest roles in creating the sense of ubiquitous mystery and apprehension so crucial to the game's narrative. Arguably telling its story, perhaps the most notable aspect of Shadow's legacy, in a way words, images, or even mechanics might not. Take a track like Prohibited Arts, for example, that plays when you enter the temple for the first time. It's a soft, lilting piece of music, mainly revolving around a simple 1-6-4 to six to four chord progression in the bass. It moves in distinct blocks, making way for a strong diatonic melody in the higher register. You can imagine walking slowly to this rhythm, like a march. It lines up with Wander's footsteps, lending the setting an almost religious weight, like you're stepping on hallowed ground. When the bass briefly transitions from the D minor to the E flat major chord, however, it clashes with the E and the A in the melody specifically, creating intervals of a minor second and an augmented fourth respectively, perhaps the most dissonant intervals one could envision. It's a brief dissonance combined with the unexpected timbral stab of a stringed instrument. A subtle nod that things aren't quite what they seem, that you're stepping where you perhaps shouldn't. In this less than two minutes of music, you already have the composition outlining what will shortly be reinforced through exposition. The music is telling the story without words. Furthermore, this feeling of mystery is continued once you begin to explore the vast open world through the score's sparse, somewhat atypical instrumentation. Specifically, it's the use of the bazooki, the guitar-like instrument utilised by Otani thanks to its ability to transcend any one nation's music, as it can be thought of as Mediterranean, Middle Eastern or Asian. It's non-specific, you're supposed to feel like an outsider here, like you can't quite make sense of where you are or what you're witnessing, even if it might feel familiar, and the instrumentation is a significant factor in that. Hell, even at its most climactic, the music still carries this sense of weight and mystery. Different to most battle themes in other games, where you might expect some speedy, pulsing synths or rhythmic syncopation to evoke anxious energy, Shadow of the Colossus greets you with something more understated. 
The track The Opened Way that plays when you mount certain colossi sticks to a fairly leisurely 130 beats per minute, which on its own is hardly enough to send your blood racing. The melody played by the higher register strings and brass sounds huge for sure. But it's also incredibly simple, rigidly sticking to blocky quarter and eighth note rhythms. It's a rigidity mirrored by the bass and percussion, with the former rarely moving much, very occasionally going to the C or D major from the E minor root, creating something of an ominous drone, and the ostinato or repeated pattern in the percussion weighs everything down, pounding the rhythm into your head, again like a slow but intense march. Grasping onto the wing of a giant bird as it soars through the air at ludicrous speeds, for example, should evoke feelings of swashbuckling adventure. It's the crescendo following the long stretches of exploration, and it's to the score's credit that the music is both simple enough to be memorable, as well as enough of a dynamic elevation to feel momentous. But it's also melancholic in its own way, almost funereal in the way the rhythm stomps along. And as the battle reaches its conclusion and the final blow is struck, it's this melancholy that becomes the focus. In any other game, after taking down a monster, the player might expect some kind of triumphant fanfare, celebrating their overcoming of unfavourable odds. You know, the kind of catchy, upbeat, end of battle themes you get in games like Final Fantasy, designed to release the tension of the preceding action. In Shadow of the Colossus, any triumphalism is thrown out the window, as the agonising fall of the slain Colossus is mirrored by the protracted descent of chords, going from an inverted D minor to E to E flat before resting on the root D minor, giving the effect of slowly toppling through a chromatic progression. What's more, listen to the way the chords shift. Underlying harmony moves, but there's always that one note, specifically the fifth, that lingers for a couple of beats afterwards, feeling like it only resolves at the last possible second. It's known as a suspension, a means of evoking tension by creating a brief dissonance as the chord doesn't resolve right away. In the best possible way, it's languid, it's painful. You want to will the note forward, put the chord out of its misery. But it doesn't end there. As the monster lays lifeless, the sombre minor chords resolve to a G major played lightly by the strings. What was once grim now feels light, happy and airy, violently clashing with the visuals of, you know, being consumed by black toxic sludge. The music now conveys a sense of irony, almost poking fun at you for thinking that you've done any good here. Congratulations, you've just killed a docile beast, you've partially accelerated the inevitable decay of this world for purely selfish gains. Good job, you mad dick. The thing is, could you imagine this sentiment, this unease, this irony feeling as prevalent if the music was any different in this scenario? No, it's this specific composition that tells that story. The music is as much a narrative device as the mechanics. It's literally a funeral march, following in the tradition of Beethoven's Eroica or Chopin's Sonata in B-flat minor, right down to the brief shift to a major key, feeling totally at odds with the otherwise grim nature of those pieces. It's an irony not lost on Otani himself. He has stated very clearly that his intention with the game was to create that kind of reflection in the player, that you saved someone you loved, but at what cost? The religious undertones of the music are absolutely deliberate, with Otani seeking something resembling a requiem or a prayer. Hell, even the use of the bazooki was the result of conversations Otani had with Ueda himself. Otani wasn't merely writing a soundtrack here desperate from the other parts of the game's design. 
he was arguably a part of the storytelling process, and the resulting compositions proved just how fundamental his input was to the palpably uneasy atmosphere that turned this game into the classic we know it as today. So I know this was something a little bit different, but I hope you enjoyed my piece on the music of Shadow of the Colossus regardless. If you did, maybe consider hitting subscribe as well as the little bell thingy, and check out the podcast in the description. If you feel like going the extra mile however, you can always check out the Patreon like these wonderful folks currently on screen. It must seem meaningless at this point, but I cannot emphasise enough how thankful I am for your continued support. In particular, I'd like to thank Mark B. Writing, Michael Wolfe, Artyom Vitsyuk, Spike Jones, Vasily Hrabinka, Chris Wright, Dr. Motorcycle, Harry Fuertes, Ham Migas, Travis Bennett, Zach Casserly, Samuel Pickens, Tom Nash, Shardfire, Philip Lange, Rob, Rusty Shackelford, Anna Pimentel, Jesse Ryan, Brandon Robinson, Diego Fox Obuza, Justin's Holderness, Biggie Smith, Peter, Christian Kuhneman, Camel Traffic, Nico Blakely, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. And with that, I'm Hamish Black, and this has been Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.